The 1970s were a dark period in the sport, with many drivers tragically passing away due to the sport's extremely low levels of security. One of those situations was Roger Williamson's death. A driver who looked like a sensation on his way up the ranks, he unfortunately never got his chance to shine in Formula 1. Today, we're going to look at the tragic day in 1973 and why the crash was more than preventable, leading to improved standards in the sport. As the 1973 Dutch Grand Prix, Roger Williamson, a promising young British driver for the March team, participated in only his second Grand Prix. Widely recognised for his considerable talent and previous success in the British club racing scene, where he secured victories in the 1971 and 1972 British Formula 3 championships. Williamson's Formula 1 debut at Silverstone marked him as a notable prospect. However, tragedy struck during that debut, when he was involved in a collision that took out several drivers. Eager to continue racing at Zandvoort, Williamson's vehicle was repaired in time for the event, which gave him hopes for a positive outcome. Despite qualifying in the 18th position, the 25-year-old driver anticipated a solid performance in his second Formula 1 race. Early on, he engaged in a competitive battle with fellow British driver David Purley, successfully securing a favourable position. As the race progressed, Williamson seemed on the road for a very good finish. Unfortunately, on lap 8, disaster struck. At one of the fastest sections of the track, Williamson experienced a tyre blowout, propelling his car into the Armco barrier, and to make matters worse, the poorly secured barrier acted like a springboard, flipping his car upside down and starting a fire. The horrifying incident unfolded rapidly. As trapped beneath the overturned car, Williamson remained conscious, desperately calling for help. Shockingly, the response from track marshals was inadequate. Fellow driver Purley witnessed Williamson's crash and immediately stopped on the side of the track, then ran across the live track in an effort to flip the car and extinguish the flames with just a fire extinguisher. The marshals, lacking fireproof clothing, unlike Purley, hesitated to intervene. In a distressing turn of events, the marshals prioritised crowd control over rescuing Williamson. When the crowd, finally aware of what was happening, decided to run onto the track to help Purley. However, his appeals for assistance went unanswered, and as the fire raged on, the severity of the situation became evident. Despite Purdy's best effort, Roger Williamson was left to die in the burning wreck. While all this went down, the race continued with drivers unaware of the gravity of the accident, highlighting the inadequate response and lack of preparedness for such emergencies during that era. Purley was escorted away by a marshal who made no effort to help him, leading to a confrontational exchange between Purley and him. Meanwhile, a fire truck situated approximately 150 yards away remained stationary for five to six minutes following the incident. Oddly enough, the fire truck was directed not to take the more direct route, but rather a diagonal path. Despite the unfolding tragedy, the race persisted without interruption, and some individuals criticised other drivers for not stopping to assist during the collision. They assumed that Purley was attempting to save his own car rather than realising what was going on. Nicky Lauda confirmed this in his autobiography as he was unaware of someone still inside the burning car. Purley explained that, having just emerged from his own race car, his adrenaline was high and Williamson was a good friend, so he wanted to help him, but he said that he understands the reluctance of others to approach a burning car in such a situation. Regarding the delayed arrival of the fire engine, questions were asked about the decision-making process, as some suggested that the race should have been halted to allow the fire engine to reach the scene at full speed. The hesitation of the fire engine, seemingly hugging the curb due to the ongoing race, was another topic of discussion, and the distance from the incident to the decision-making grid, approximately a mile and a half away, contributed to a lack of awareness regarding the gravity of the tragedy. Roger Williamson's tragic death stands as one of Formula One's most shameful episodes, marked by a shocking lack of preparation and safety measures. While the loss of a driver in a crash is already a profound tragedy, Williamson's death resulted from a combination of negligence, indifference to safety, and even fear among a few individuals. Though many people were personally affected, there is a sense that Williamson's death was just another in a long line of racing drivers killed competing in the sport they loved. The Dutch Grand Prix continued to be staged at Zandvoort until 1985, and most damningly, Formula One drivers continued to die. Francois Sever was killed later in 1973, Peter Rebson and Helmut Koenig were both lost in 1974, and Mark Donoghue in 1975. Along with these men, Williamson has become emblematic of a brutal era of Grand Prix racing. In the aftermath of this horrific incident, significant changes were implemented. 
Fire-resistant clothing became compulsory for all trackside marshals, ensuring their ability to intervene in case of a fire. And subsequent years witnessed a notable increase in drivers stopping at accidents to contribute to rescue efforts. These developments aimed at preventing a recurrence of the mistakes that led to Williamson's untimely death. His tragedy marked the first time that the signals of much-needed change had been demonstrated so publicly and shockingly. And eventually, lessons were learned that finally brought about the enhanced safety standards that were so desperately needed and which can be so easy to take for granted today. Thanks to proper track inspections, much better safety protection and training for marshals, improved track management, communications and protocols, improved firefighting equipment and techniques, and massively improved car design all made the sport much safer. But that all came too late for the gritty little fighter from Leicester, whom so many believed implacably would be a future British world champion. What he might have achieved in 1974 in a Wheatcroft run Yardley McLaren M23 against Emerson Fittipaldi in a Marlborough version will forever remain one of the sport's greatest what might have been. Five decades later, the pain remains raw, and the annual celebration of his life is a sight to see. On the 30th anniversary of Roger Williamson's fatal crash in 2003, a bronze statue was unveiled in his honour at the Donington Park Circuit in his native Leicestershire, and this commemoration served as a reminder of the profound impact of that tragic day on the sport. David Purley's act of bravery saw him awarded the George Medal. He didn't compete in Formula One through 1974 to 1976, other than an appearance at the 1974 British Grand Prix, preferring to race in other series before returning in 1977. At the British Grand Prix in that year, his throttle became stuck open and his car hit a wall at high speed, travelling at 108 miles per hour and coming to a complete standstill in just 66 centimetres, putting an estimated force of 179.8 g on his body. Although he suffered many broken bones, he survived. The remains of the car are also on view at the Donington Collection. Purley recovered enough to compete in motor racing but moved to aerobatics. He was killed in a plane crash in 1985 when his biplane hit the sea of his hometown of Bognor Regis. Purley also competed successfully in the Macau Grand Prix and his car is on display in the museum in Macau. The saddest thing about all this is that I don't think much would have changed if Nicky Lauda or any of the other drivers had stopped to help and Lauda was reported after the race to have felt sick with guilt that nobody had been willing or able to give Purley help. That was an era of no team radios and communication options were limited, with no means to clarify the situation with the pit crew. Unfortunately, even if others had joined Purley in assisting, it seems unlikely that it would have significantly changed the outcome of the accident. The accident publicly exposed the failings in Grand Prix safety at the time and was further ammunition for those like Jackie Stewart to use in their campaign to make Grand Prix racing safer. Luckily though, times have changed since then and especially with the introduction of the halo, we now watch and enjoy an extremely safe sport in Formula 1 but despite all these significant strides in safety measures in motorsports since that fateful day, the inherent danger persists as was the situation with Jules Bianchi and Romain Grosjean. However, the frequency of fatalities has diminished considerably and Roger Williamson, at the young age of 25, remains an emotional symbol of the price paid in the pursuit of this high-speed sport. Thank you ever so much for watching this video and let me know your thoughts about this tragic accident in the comment section down below.